I think she sort of hated the the sort of babysitting of journalists, you know, the idea that, mm. you know, there would be a media center in a conflict zone. I mean, that would be complete anathema to her that there was some control over where you got your stories from. And if she saw a pack of journalists, she would go resolutely in the other direction. I mean, there was the famous line when she said, my God, I think they're drugging the journalists because mm. everyone seemed like they were sort of, you know, <laughs> she went into somewhere where people were waiting for visas and thought everyone you know, looked like they were kind of drugged out of their minds, you know, was just sort of waiting and, and, and stopped being proactive. So, mm. you know, she met Paul and he was the guy who'd smuggled himself into Syria by building a boat. Yeah. And that's what impressed her. And yeah, she was well, like, she called him Boatman forevermore. That's the she sort was of like, madness that she was looking for and tenacity that she was looking yeah. for, you know. There's a quote in the film, it's her editor who said she's seen more war than most soldiers. Um, and Paul Conroy came from an army background and the film really does tackle the subject of PTSD, which at the time wasn't really spoken about in terms of journalists, war reporters, war correspondents. It was seen as solely something that belonged to the armed forces. How does this film explore that and its effect on Marie? I think that in the title, A Private War, you know, it's about, it's about you know, people who, who venture kind of outside of the pack into the most dangerous places on earth, but it's also about the private war of the mind. I think some, sometimes the lonely moments happen when you're back at home processing what you've seen. And of course, you know, that's why a lot of foreign correspondents have the reputation for, you know, hard drinking and partying because there's a, you know, that's certainly one release, but it, it only goes, takes you so far. And ultimately there's always going to be the time when you're, when the sort of devastation of all, all that you've witnessed hits home. Come on, let's go. No, wait. <laughs> Cool, cool. Please, listen to me next time. It took its toll on Marie, it took its toll on Paul as well. And when you look at her career and the story she told, because the question she would ask everywhere she went is, why isn't the world here? I want to tell these people's stories so people will listen. So the question, I suppose, having inhabited these people's lives, do you feel that it's worth it? 100%, yeah, yeah, and I, you know, it's still, you know, look at yeah, Marie lost her life in Syria, look what's still happening in Syria today, you know, and uh, need more people like Marie and Paul here willing to go against the flow to, to reveal the truth of these conflict zones. I mean, it's, um, it's you know, it's a, it's a breed of journalism that should be heralded and, and we think that this movie is a sort of homage to, to true journalism and, um, you know, I don't think for a minute they would say it wasn't wasn't worth it, you know. You know, and they have the courage to call out dictators on their lies. You know, Marie was the first person to sort of go on record saying, you know, this idea that the Syrian regime is going after terrorist gangs is a complete and utter lie. And then, you know, what happens is after sort of seven years of conflict, you know, a regime can be sort of slowly rehabilitated and, and suddenly kind of you know, get back on the international stage with some respectability. And, and Jamie and I have actually kind of, we're a bit stunned sitting here having this interview because we've just heard that the case that Marie's sister was bringing against the Assad regime went to court. And the judge passed judgment yesterday that the Syrian regime has been found guilty of deliberately targeting journalists, deliberately targeting the media center, and are guilty of the direct assassination of Marie. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a massive verdict. I mean, it's colossal. Um, and we've just, you know, we've just had that news just about three minutes ago, yeah. Um, and, you know, that all was born out of the fact that when Paul Conroy was in the media centre in Homs, he, with his military background, heard the pattern of shell fire and said, OK, this is, they're, they're bracketing. bracketing. This, yeah. is, this is, we are being deliberately targeted and we have to leave right now because they found us. Do you think this film will restore faith in those journalists who are going out there putting their lives on the line to shine a light in places uh, in the world that people can't have easy access to? I hope so. I think, I think the, the, the curious thing about this film is that it is uplifting. I think, I think people think they may be in for a hard, challenging watch. Mm. And I think the ultimate feeling is that you feel like you've grown a little bit mm. with the experience of living with people like Marie and Paul um, because they kind of show that there is so much more to life you kind of get out of your own bubble. Marie Colvin would go everywhere and want to tell people's stories. 
Why do you think her story should be heard? On one level, I think, you know, she wouldn't want to be part of the story. But on another level, I think what Matt Heinemann, our director, has cleverly done is he's put the focus where she would have wanted it, which is on, you know, the people she wrote about. And he cast um, pretty much the entire sort of canvas of our movie that, you know, isn't Jamie and me, Stanley Tucci and um, other, other English actors who populate the London scenes with, um, with refugees from various conflict zones currently living in Jordan. So, you know, there are people talking in their own words about their own experiences, which tally very closely to the articles that Marie wrote. So, in a way, you know, the biggest close-ups of our film, they're not on me or Jamie, they're on, you know, the Syrian people that she would have put the biggest close-up on.